Welcome to this stream, which is not a Pathfinder game. Um, we are uh, thinking about recording some of our Pathfinder games on the current campaign that we are running. Uh, we just kind of started doing one casually this year. We're having a lot of fun with it. Um, and uh, we thought it might be cool to record a session and just see if, if it's, uh, you know, if it still feels as fun to play and if it's something I can like, edit together and put up on the channel, um, then we thought it'd be fun just to kind of share it with you guys. Uh, but to start with, we wanted to do a little, like, introduction, I guess, where we sort of describe what's happened so far, because we've already done, like, six sessions, maybe? I'm not sure how many sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, right. Previously. Yeah. Because I know I missed one. <laughs> so this is our previously <laughs> on segment, uh, where we're just going to kind of go over the beginning. go over people's characters, start at the beginning of the story, and talk about what's happened Should so far. Should we do far. our backstories? Um, Probably uh, I would not. say just do like a gen we'll do like a general character intro to sort of like who yeah. you are, what your class and race are, what your general like abilities are, and and like personality essentially. Okay. And then we'll just we can just kind of tell the story as we go. Let's um, do it. Our players are going to be telling the story for the most part, uh, just because I don't want to accidentally like say something that they don't know yet. Because <laughs> um, I got a lot of stuff that I keep track of all the time. Um, and then if we do end up recording them, this will go up in the same playlist as sort of like an introduction to the, the series. So yeah. Okay. Sound good? Yeah. Cool. So, Let's go. Did Ricky respond about tacos? Almost definitely not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this will go for about an, about an hour, tacos. probably, because we have um, some other stuff we got to do after this. So we should probably do this chronologically. We could do it like each main major story piece. We could each do a character thing and then... Well, to start with, let's introduce characters, actually. Yeah. We, we, we started off in our first session with uh, a big um, Colosseum battle between our first four characters which were oh, yeah. uh, these four here. Jeffrey ended up joining in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. um, so starting down with uh, Matt, where, oh wait, one other thing. This has nothing to do with Altered Egos. <laughs> I've seen a few questions about it. Altered Egos was the other Pathfinder stream we tried doing a few years ago. That's Ian's thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think everybody who was involved in it is still interested in playing it if it became an option again, but uh, it's his thing to run, so you have to talk to him about it. Um, but this See, is unrelated. This is a completely this different is thing. This Kyle's thing and our um, thing. So that might still come back eventually. It has nothing to do with this. Who is it's Bard? Completely disconnected. Um, Who is Slade? We are. Bard. This game is playing. It's Pathfinder. It's not Dungeons and Dragons. It is a separate um, game system that's basically Dungeons and Dragons, but with way more details. All right. So, Matt. Who are you and in the game? Break the My character is Crowboy. Oh, here. Uh, spelled C-R-E-A-U-X. Do you have B -O -I, the pictures? B-O-I, I think. Boy. Crowboy. Crowboy. And he is a... I thought you said you were going to touch anything. I lied. Oh, he's going to flash a picture of Crowby. Yeah. Oh, my oh, God. You're, you're going to see... Gonna ruin how... everything. No, this shouldn't. No. If it's already on... Oh, it's not already on there. Now huh. you go. All right, so I'm Crowboy. I am a... Whatever the bird race is. Oh, good, you did do it right. Uh, okay. Gosh, what are they called? A tengu. I'm a Tengu. Um, he's a very metropolitan bird. He's a musician, as you can see. Uh, he plays the hurdy gurdy, his favorite instrument. <laughs> Look up a YouTube video in another Please. tab. Because <laughs> the hurdy gurdy is like the most metal instrument of the Middle Ages. And uh, he likes, as you can see, he likes accessories, much like any bird. He picks up the shiny things that he finds and places them in his feathers. Um, a bit full of himself, because he knows a, he's hot. A bit. Um, <laughs> you know, he doesn't have much interest in fighting, but despite that, he's still the best fighter there is. Um, yeah, that's about it. Thomas. Okay, my turn. Um, <clears throat> my character's name is uh, Deathocles, or Deathocles, depending on your... Um, I guess your accent. Um, he is a gargoyle psychic. Uh, and of like an Aquarian race. So he looks Cthulhu-y. Um, he, uh, he's a bit of a space cadet kind of. He's kind of the quiet um, type. He's from like an ancient time. Space cadet. So he doesn't really get a lot of uh, the, the modern world, but he's, you know, piecing it together a little bit. Um, pretty pretty smart dude. Um, those wings are just aesthetic, unfortunately. But they look dope. Are you um, telling me your concrete wings can yeah, fly? Yeah, my concrete wings aren't very good at keeping me in the air. What are you made of stone, I guess? I made, yeah, I'm made out of stone. stone. Like a pretty black kind are of Are you stone. made out of stone? I thought you just looked like stone. He's I am. It's obsidian. 
Okay. No, it's no, not. No, it's not. It's been a bit vague, I guess. Yeah, you're, there's you're not really... strictly stone, but you can freeze like stone, and you have, like, damage resistance. I, I was, I was not... Says, That's Cthulhu. You can't fool me. <laughs> He's a gargoyle Cthulhu. Edgy. I think initially... Edgy. Correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, but I'm pretty sure initially I was not a stone creature. Right. I was made into stone at some point. So now I am... A stone creature. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Oh, we, so he got he has the stone skin disease. We should show because they're asking who did those pictures. Kyle drew all. Oh, yeah. Kyle, yeah. Kyle did all that. Like half an hour. Kyle yeah. did all and the then We also showed up to the first game and he presented us with like packet like character sheets that were like on special paper, yeah. like old parchment <laughs> looking paper, ye e- oldy paper. Yeah. Them, set them on fire a little bit. <laughs> yeah, was super duper. Like he's an insane person. He can do nothing <laughs> half halfway. <laughs> nope. <laughs> they're great. Ellen, how about yours? Uh, my character's name is Fifi Bumble Socks. She is a fairy, and she is a gunslinger. She's a gunslinging fairy. I don't remember the details you guys went. Did you give backstory? Only a little bit. Just like who you are. Oh, okay, like, what's yeah. Your, what's your motivation? Um, her family is dead, and okay. she's <laughs> trying to figure out why. And she ended. She accidentally ended up in uh, a different plane. She's from. The Fey plane, Fey world, type thing. Uh, her gun is magic. It has, it is magic powered, but it shoots normal bullets. Uh, so the yeah. magic replaces the gunpowder. Yes, sort no. of. Well, the magic powered, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Magic, well, magic, magic explosion instead of gunpowder explosion. It's that really great word that we get to throw around called energy. Yeah, well, energy. well, I don't keep trying to get ammo because that sucks. Yeah. So. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's magical in all the ways that make it more convenient to use. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess that's probably it. Is that all the detail you guys want to see? Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. that's enough. You're Maybe. a fairy that shoots stuff. That's Did you mention me. how dumb you were? Oh, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm very low intelligence. Um, and your dexterity but, is like 21. Yes, but I'm very, I'm incredibly hard to hit, but I'm very charismatic. So in Pathfinder, Did fairies are described as looking like... Like Ten year olds. Yeah. They have like they have like child faces and they're about Barbie's size. They're about they're foot this tall. big. Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually rewind a little bit. Um oh. uh what are your what are your highest and lowest stats? Just because it gives people a good idea of you remember? I think my charisma is my highest, or maybe my next is your bar- My charisma is my highest, and then my lowest is like I don't know, being bad at stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. How about Thomas? How about you? I think my int is my highest and my charisma is my lowest. That sounds about right. Yeah, exactly right. (laughs) Yeah, you're not charismatic. I'm not very dexy either. You're Uh, definitely not charismatic, though. I am very not charismatic. Speaking of low dex, John. (laughs) (laughs) So I am uh, a a, uh, 16 foot tall uh, Christmas tree treant. Named General Douglas Fur, um, I wield a giant battle axe, uh, one-handed, uh, and, uh, and uh, I, I make the um, I make all the puns. And and uh, so General Douglas Fur is a uh, a high wisdom character, but very low intelligence character, and uh, but he's high strength and high uh, constitution because he's a, he's a tree. But very low dex because he's a tree. <laughs> um, he goes he goes around pretty much just kind of um, he's trying to find someone that he's looking for um, an old friend after uh, he was sold to slavery and then sold to Mister Millennium and uh, met these guys and he's just kind of a kind of a nuisance because he's pretty arrogant constantly th- uh, tries to be in charge this is why he calls himself a general despite never having led an army. And, um, and I didn't know that. <laughs> and uh, and um, so he generally just kind of gets in people's way and kind of makes good decisions sometimes and very bad decisions most times. So yeah. doesn't he though? He does. <laughs> he does. He's he's very head first. Mm. And then we have uh, Jeffrey, who I actually don't have your character art ready still. I apologize. I will have it for the actual for the next uh, camp uh, <clears throat> session, but. Well, um, let's see here. My character's name is Vaz. He is a half orc shaman. Um, I came into the game with several. How many games after since it started? Three, uh, three, three, three. three or four. That's it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was yeah, one um, Yeah. So uh, uh, basically, I yeah, grew up in this village that they came through, and 
help them with uh, some of uh, missions that they had to go through a cave and fight several things. Uh, so, uh, see my character, uh, since he's a shaman, I believe he's high wisdom? Is it wisdom? Uh, it's pretty sure yours is wisdom, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think that's your, yours. And I, I feel like everything else was fairly average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I, I'm basically, the, I came in as, like, the group's only healer because yeah. they have nothing. <laughs> um... <laughs> So yeah, my my job is just to kind of keep everyone alive. Uh, yeah, why? Did a lot you more get... difficult than I expected it to be. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey, why did you get thrown into our game? Because <laughs> we needed a hero. <laughs> Y'all were yeah, I mean, gonna you were die, to him, right? Because they almost because they were getting themselves killed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much dying on the rig. I had so. a, I, there was there was a uh, a point like after three sessions I, I contacted Jeffrey and I was like so hey we're playing this Pathfinder game and uh, they're gonna die because <laughs> I don't have anybody who has healing spells um, so can you come like as a guest spot at least for a few uh, few episodes and he's probably sticking around we'll see yeah <laughs> no it happens. definitely looks that way <laughs> <laughs> thanks to uh, General Douglas Fur. <laughs> yeah they're asking about the blue faced man in the corner that's a great segue into uh, the first session. So who wants to start Ooh, off on the actual yeah. story? Perfect. Uh, you should probably start off, Kyle, because you, you put us in the situation. Sure, okay. I'll, I'll get it started off, and then I'll hand it off to you guys. Sure. Okay. So we opened up um, the session with a, uh, a coliseum out in the middle of a jungle. Um, we are. If anyone has played, uh, I think, 5th edition, we're, I, I'm using the continent of Corvair as the map, but I'm completely butchering all of it. I just needed a map that I didn't have to draw out myself, so I took it, and I was like, I'm going to take all these names, and I'm going to decide what's there on my own. So, it looks the same, but I'm not referencing pretty much anything about the story. Um, but they are down in the, the jungle peninsula in the, uh, the southeast, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we started off in this big coliseum, uh, and each one of them was found independently uh, and purchased, hired, or befriended by a man named Mr. Millennium, who is the guy you see in the corner there. Uh, he's, a, he's a strange, charismatic blue man who owns this coliseum and seems to lead the town. And he was he's pretty much just based off of Jeff Goldblum from Thor Ragnarok, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, it started off with all four of these guys uh, being pitted against each other in the coliseum to see uh, who was strongest and who would become the leader of a task force he was putting together. Um, so you guys want to recount what happened in that in the Coliseum <laughs> in episode, first, that first fight? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was... I mean, it was mostly just a fight, which is a little hard to convey. That's true. Um, we fought a lot. Uh, uh, John was the first one out, right? Yeah, somehow yeah. Douglas yeah. Fir died first. Yeah. 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 Well, because I was the giant tree that everyone focused. Well, okay. To be clear, three <laughs> people were fighting, and Crowboy was running around. Oh, Crowboy doesn't yeah, no. know. <laughs> I, I saw it as my opportunity because I am a showman. And I care more about being loved uh, and famous and popular than about <laughs> fighting and everything. So I was just kind of hyping the crowd up, like running around, playing my hurdy gurdy, like, <laughs> and they were all killing each other. So it worked out good for me. He he somehow manages to always be doing the least amount of stuff, but always coming out on top. Yeah, mm -hmm. we wouldn't um, be screwed without him. <laughs> yeah, we would be screwed. He always ends up saving the day, despite the fact absolutely doing nothing to try and save the day. Mm -hmm. yes. Literally, the most accurate <laughs> description. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, so John was out first, and then I was out next, and then it came down to Crowboy and Deathocles. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah. Well, I can give I can give a, I can give a little bit more yeah, detail. Yeah, I, think, I can yeah. give a little more detail to kind of make, give the scene a bit there. So we were we were fighting in a coliseum, and then all of a sudden the uh, things took, it was kind of an elemental kind of shift area thing. Yes. Um, the the at first it was a large wind tunnel. Basically, um, oh, yeah. wind started circling around the outside, and uh, every, everyone pretty much couldn't stand and Fifi was like really having a hard time because she's like <laughs> tiny oh, yeah. um, and uh, we had to try and overcome that first I was a tree so I was fine but um, <laughs> then all of a sudden the ground started moving and uh, platforms started coming out and raising yeah. up and then uh, after the platforms came up it started filling up with water yeah so it was whole, like it did like a full round of like Pokemon Stadium stages through the fight yeah. um, and then eventually came down to just you two just like in the mud circling around one of the posts yeah. until I think you got like one, one like hit in on him. Yeah, ahead, well, like, ahead of I was I was dodging and hiding behind a platform that had risen. We well, so we had no context, right? So we were starting this off, and it's like we're in a coliseum. 
I don't actually know if I'm supposed to kill anybody. So I'm not like aiming full force at anyone. They're, they're still asking about the blue face. So just to reiterate, the blue face is Mr. Oh. Millennium, the owner of the Coliseum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the campaign so far has just been called the Millennium Campaign. He's sort of the yeah the driver of force. So we actually had to get everyone down to zero HP, right? Like, yeah. Like you had to. No, you were fighting to the death. It was, yeah, we we were. <laughs> when, and so tell us in. when they died, yeah, a bunch that? of paramedics flew in on like flying carpets and just oh, yeah, held right. down and pulled them out. Yeah, right. Someone tried to bribe right. them. I think it was John. Oh yeah, somebody who was someone trying to, to bribe you. I, I didn't try bribing you, I don't think. Maybe it was you. <laughs> that sounds more like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So John goes out first, I go out second. You guys are fighting about something. We're just like running around a pillar like Yeah, we were, yeah, we were each we were right. each very close to dying, so it was like peek out, attack, hide. Peek out, attack, hide. Yeah. I think I, think I tried to like make it. a jump and missed. Like I was trying to get on top of a thing. Oh yeah, because yeah. I was the one I was hiding behind, I think. Yeah. Uh so Dethocles but I have a, winning. Uh, yeah. I have like a yeah. psychic thrust move. Yeah. Which is neat because Mind thrust. Mind thrust. Mind thrust. <laughs> yeah. The best power. Like legit I Yeah, just that's ridiculous. That's been my crutch. What can you do now? You can roll like five D eight against people or something just without even making yeah, an it's, attack roll. It's not D eight. I think it's D is it D eight? No, I think I think it's up to D eight now. Maybe in your next level. No, it's the number of die I get to roll goes up. I don't think the die goes up. Or at least hasn't yet. Yeah, I don't remember what it is exactly, but it's insane. But yeah. Anyway, he won. So I won. Um they all get uh restored in the infirmary and then Mr. Millennium lets them know that uh he's uh putting together a task force to kind of go out and um, basically just take care of things that he can't because he's stuck trying dealing with the day-to-day at the at the Coliseum. Yeah. And specifically he wants them to capture things and send them back so that he has more stuff for the Coliseum. So he gives them a wand that they can use to uh, basically just pokeball different monsters. <laughs> they can yeah. Yeah. touch it to things and if they're weak enough it will teleport them via teleportation spells back to the Coliseum. Yeah. Um, but if they're not weak enough, it won't work, and we can't ever use it on that monster again. Right, for, you, for a day. Yeah, like oh. that, so that's a reset of one day for each, each attempt. But that okay. specific entity, not yeah. that type of monster. Right. Um, and so he then sent you guys out on a test run into the jungle uh, with the instructions, basically just, like, impress me. <laughs> like, yeah. find something for yeah. me. And just kind of let you guys loose. Yeah. Uh, the very first, so we... <laughs> We got to go to the um, armory and select some basic like necessities before venturing out. Yeah, this is important actually because uh, Douglas asked for two health potions, <laughs> which comes into play later. Yes, it does. That does actually <laughs> become incredibly important. Just wanted to mention that we had. Do we have? We had the bag too, right? Um, not yet. That wasn't until after you guys oh, got back. Oh, that's right. That, okay, I'm sorry. You were given sorry. very. Spoilers you guys. were given nothing. You were after, told you could grab well, something if you anything? wanted. But. Uh, not the really antagonist. He's more of the instigator. So, after so far, you leave at least the Colosseum. That was probably the hardest part as a party to like figure out how our dynamic as a party worked because we oh go into the God. village around the around the Colosseum because <laughs> the Colosseum isn't isolated. It's yeah. in the it's middle town, of town. Yeah. It's kind of like a little bustling Pussy village. Bar. So we go out and. That part was well. Okay, so for whatever reason, we were looking for a dragon. Were we looking for a dragon? You no, were looking for something. We were, yeah. we were yeah, looking we for were something, and then we had, we, we, for something. And so we, we stumbled across kobolds first, though. We what? Did we go across the kobolds before yeah, well, the dragon? Yeah, we were in the village. Yeah, first we were in the I went village outside of the Coliseum, <laughs> yes, and I don't know. I don't know anything that exists in this world, and so I go and I buy a little wooden figurine that I think is a oh, dragon. Yeah. And I'm like, what is it actually? It's a, it's a, it's a T-Rex. It was a T-Rex, yeah. It was a okay. lizard. You yeah. never identified it, I think, but it was a T-Rex. It was a T-Rex, okay. and so I just assumed it was a dragon based off the description from other people. And then yeah, Douglas Fur she shows rips it, it out of my hands and then crushes it. She, she shows it to me, and then I just grab it and I crush it because Douglas Fur... Is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> hates lizards. It's a yeah. T-Rex. Which also comes into play later. I was going to say that's relevant. And yes, How Pro stupid are you to happen. think that the wooden figurine I'm holding is a real lizard? It made me it. angry. <laughs> no, sorry, he so hates lizards, and he's also an asshole. Are an asshole. <laughs> well, yes, yes, also, yeah, he's also okay, an asshole. Good. Yeah. So, that, so, so we were having trouble figuring out our character dynamic, and then John said it for us. Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys I, eventually wander your way into the jungle. Yeah. And I think encounter a few giant spiders that you're fighting off. So yeah, oh, jeez. Um, and so a whole bunch of them started just descending from the trees. That was wild. And then, well, who uh, messed that one up? I set the forest on fire. 
Because we did. We did because that. I was like, ooh, wait a second. Light those on fire. They were like, but that's because we killed like five and then like another herd was Yeah, coming. they just started like we, descending. Like it was a spiders. gruesome battle with like one... Or yeah. was it one or you, two? You fought three, I okay. think, and then a whole bunch. So it was a it was a rough battle yeah. against three of them. You guys yeah. were running. You caught one. You ended up hitting right. one with we a wand. Yeah, we wanted one of them. This is the cobalt. Uh, no, this was just the, the spiders. spiders. Oh, right, 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 right the, the spiders started right. getting speared from a distance, and all these cobalts ran in. Like, and yeah, I was, we, I was holding could, it. Yeah, we fought the first three. We were pretty bruised up, and then there were just millions of them surrounding us. This is such a cute introduction story because, like, as we're in the woods, we're all trying to fight him. I'm doing damage. I'm actually like hitting him. You're having a hard time because there's spiders, and you you basically oh right do your mind like powers didn't work. Oh, they didn't. oh yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And then we have a tree, and he he's actually doing damage too. Yeah. And but then, I'm also immune to poison, so I can just grab him. That's true. Yeah. And then cruel boy oh. lights the forest on fire. <laughs> that was all I had. One of our teammates is a tree. Yeah. So we just see John go like. Then we just see Douglas Fir just like bolt another yeah, direction he's, he's, and just <laughs> run away from the fire. And then I think. I the Thocles went one way, and I think he might have followed. We like we left, we like split. Up. He he ran right. a different direction. We ended up back together. Yeah, you pretty much all ran the same direction, and then you were found by by Cobalt. He just that's also, true. We were saved I think he by was just Cobalt. first, right? which I promptly he was, like, he was like I'm leaving because took care of. Uh, worth He's mentioning flammable. to answer a Kitty Shipper Cave Girls question. Uh, they all started at level three, mm. and by the oh end yeah, of that, good question. By next session, you guys are at level five. Kitty mm. Shipper Cave Girl. <laughs> So then we started the next <laughs> session with you guys being um, led through the forest um, by the kobolds into their camp. Yes. And do you guys remember what um, what happened after that? Yes. Uh, so we got to the kobold camp, which is basically like on a. Um, oh, like the kobold. And then face. this right. is where this is this the is the session was I was not there for. So the yeah, John, the John actually wasn't present. So um, a- as they make it into the camp, Douglas mysteriously disappears because I didn't want to deal with playing him the whole time. He caught on fire. Um, <laughs> I think I put himself out. Yeah, the tree managed to slip away into the trees. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. him, like, John there. Is, John's character, <laughs> Douglas Fir, is 16 feet tall. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a weird game to plan for because she's a foot tall and he's 16 feet and they're everywhere in between. So, like, yeah. planning just, like, physical spaces for them to go to is hard. So we go to the first kobold camp and they're 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 kind of home homely, I guess. They saved well, so they saved us, right? They saved our asses. Well, they captured us. They saved you from the spiders. They, well, they, they saved us from the spiders. They let us off. We weren't sure if we were captured or not. Yeah. Sure. But yeah, they took us to their village, and then I'm trying to remember the. They were like, they were like, if you're gonna if you're gonna stay, we need you to defeat our our monster. Well, they took you to their they, dragon they, for judgment. Oh yeah, yeah. They, 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 I was gonna yeah. say, yeah, yeah that's right, it was that's right. judgment. They were like, they were like, we need to take you to our our leader or something for judgment. Kobolds are great because they think that they're related to dragons. For anyone who doesn't know what a kobold is, kobolds are lizard people. That's they're gonna come. In, that's people. gonna that's gonna be important in a second. At they're least like in gecko our world. people. <laughs> yeah, they're like gecko people. Um, and so they take us to like this uh, cave. Is it the cave? One. There's like a cave a mouth, mouth and it's a, a clearing. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's a smaller cave. Yeah. And they're like, you're gonna you're gonna have to face up to our dragon, and, and he's gonna judge you and decide whether or not you're more like prepping up. More like, oh yeah. shit. So we're standing there waiting for this dragon to come out of this um, cave, and uh, doink doink doink, <laughs> out comes a was it two feet tall? About yeah, it's about two feet tall. Uh, kind of velociraptor shaped. Yeah. Uh, thing. I imagine it is a little, not a little foot, um, the small dinosaur in the dinosaur oh, yeah. movie that Petri? we watched this game. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? Do it? No, Petrie is the flying Petri's one. Petrie's the, yeah. It's, uh, Sarah. It was, no. it was. Oh, Sarah. 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 That, don't don't say Sarah. That makes me sad. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah's a triceratops. But yeah, two feet tall. Oh, is she the triceratops? Velociraptor yes. thing, colorful. Did it have feathers? Uh, it didn't have feathers. It no. didn't have weird blue vein it was, things. That's right. It was from Jurassic Park. Park right? It was yeah. It was like yeah, it was about like a tiny one. Like yeah. they were. I, th- it's, I think in real life, like the actual like Velociraptors are like tiny, are short More babies. So anyway, like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. am sure. Velociraptors are tiny. Utah Raptors are big. I am sure that this is a dragon. <laughs> yes. Like this time. Thoroughly. <laughs> like I know it's bigger than me. And I'm like, this is the dragon. I mean, well, they said it was a dragon. I was yeah. The Kobolds are also convinced it's a dragon. Right? Yeah, well, I was sure it was a dragon. Um. But we weren't we weren't sure if we were supposed to kill it, so we didn't well, do anything. We so just waiting, but then it like it sees me it, right flying right, around. Yeah, it starts like trying to chase and eat you. It tries to eat me. <laughs> and kind of a playful ish way. I mean, definitely you were prey, but also kind of playful. It wasn't going that hard. And I'm like, trying not I'm, to like 
I'm trying not to be rude, so I'm like <laughs> shooting bullets to the side of it oh, yeah, to like yeah. freak it out a little bit because I'm trying not to. Well, you were like, I want to shoot at it, and I was like, make an attack roll then, and you did it, and then it hit and took down half of its health. And oh, you were like, no. I was just trying to graze it. It was like, you didn't say you were trying to graze it, you no. said you shot at it. Oh. Point blank in the shoulder blades. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was, it had a spot that was simmering. Oh. It was bad. I it felt terrible. <laughs> So then it just turned into this like cartoon with all of you guys like trying we to, tried like, to jump on this thing we and tried it's to running catch around. It. <laughs> we didn't want to hurt it, so we were trying to grab it, physically grab it. You have handle animal, what? right? So you were trying to like uh, yes, like three times. It. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it's probably your low charisma, and you're also terrified. I was gonna say I tried to get it to come to me. That didn't work. It was in my hand at one point. Didn't we at just one feel point? It? Yeah, it got in my hand, but I didn't actually make the move to grab. You coaxed it into your hand. I did. You're I like, was like, uh-huh, I have it, and then it jumped away. <laughs> and then it was like, cat, just kidding, I'm gone. And I think eventually you caught it and sent it back to the Coliseum. Ducky. Also, yeah, yeah, it's Ducky. Oh yeah, that was that's right. Ducky. Yeah. Oh yeah. man, that's the sad one. That's um, the sad what? From you hit the. Uh, yeah, the, the voice actress. You hit it with the wand. Yeah. Yes. And it disappeared. And then the Cobalt oh, Raiders right. kind of started freaking out because you made their dragon disappear. So <laughs> they uh, they weren't going to mess with us anymore. <laughs> they struck up. They they requested uh, that you go to their rival camps. Yeah. Uh, their yeah. rival. Their yeah. Their rival tribes camp. This is where shit And goes take their down. dragon instead and bring it back to them because otherwise they were going to lose the loyalty of their entire tribe. <laughs> yeah. So this is where it gets nuts. So then they headed off through the <laughs> woods again, found this other uh, camp up on top of a cliff. Yeah. And you guys got there and found out um, that it, right off the bat, first impression, this, these people, these kobolds were way better off than the previous kobolds. Yeah, they had their Uh-oh. shit together. Oh, yeah. And this is the first time you guys actually like planned out a whole thing. Yeah, we sat there in the me. bushes going like, okay, yeah. what are we going to do? It's the scene in the movie where everyone puts their differences aside and decides to work yeah, together. Yeah, <laughs> pull up, pull up, pull up. No, they're, they're putting F for Ducky. It's not oh, for, it's for Ducky. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, fair. Um, I don't know how to do this without just okay, being... Okay, so... Yes. Oh, oh, better no. than that. Um, You're good. Okay. Chaos this is the part where the rap breaks down. <laughs> somebody makes a sound. Everything looks like it's same. Well, so, Crowboy so. started it off. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, it it's just like a camp balls. with like kobolds like milling around and like doing dumb stuff like poking each other in the eyes or whatever like kobolds <laughs> there was like stone walls and stuff and ruins and things they yeah, had taken yeah. over some previous building okay, yeah. is this you're playing Skyrim or? and there's like the it's elves like, what know. Know. It's, the, it's the original second edition only just first. came out we started this earlier so it's first edition Pathfinder yeah yeah they're hanging out in some ruins and there's a cave back there and so I'm like I'll start a distraction <laughs> because that's pretty much all I'm good for at that point in the campaign I can't fight for nothing but I have a instrument and so I go down Crowboy goes down and starts putting on a free concert in the park <laughs> and the kobolds love it you rolled high on it you rolled like a, like a 30 or something yeah, I rolled a form check for that it was yeah. ridiculous maybe performance is my highest stat Perf- well, oh, right. charisma is your highest right, like right, base right. stat but your performance skill is like I think plus 16 yeah. or something ridiculous like that so Jeez. are you on the outside of the camp or are you on the inside of the camp he goes yeah. right in the middle of it he's just like, you just yeah. like barge through I just like, like, like start playing, playing in the woods and like walk up like I'm a traveling uh, you know showman I just imagine the chicken from the the uh, Robin Hood Disney movie or whatever. Oh, like the, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like walking <laughs> in with the rooster, yeah. Yeah, also, yeah. he would have brought us tacos. You completely ignored it, and now I'm out of tacos. I didn't ignore it. He got back. He said I would have done it before if he had seen it. He didn't see it. I had to get tacos later. He got back from what? Tacos. From wherever he was. He was getting tacos. He says, I didn't see this till now. Is that my fault? Make him get his tacos. <laughs> anyway, so Matt, so our plan is to go around the fortress. Uh, uh, Dothocles and I are going around the fortress. You're uh, carrying him with fairy dust, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Don't forget. Oh, yeah. So we, okay, wait, we should go over quick. some special powers as, we have. As a rules lawyering thing, yeah, this is kind of interesting, because she has this ability to apply fairy dust to someone as a move action, and it gives them a move speed of 15 feet for a round. Um, flying. Yeah. Fly, but, yes, fly. But she was like, or sorry, a fly speed of 15 speed for, feet for a round. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but the but then one of you guys asked like, well, if she just keeps doing it, can we just keep flying? And I, I had to look through some stuff. I was like, I don't have anything that says she can't. So yeah. I guess really, if she just like right like you know sits on top of you, then you can just sort of fly indefinitely. Just constantly like fairy. So fairy, she. Fairy, 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 so fairy. Crowboy's over here just like jamming out on this thing with literally the entire camp around him. Yeah. While off in the distance, 
Dithocles is just kind of like floating like the it's like it's a fly well, speed, but it's like the mobility scooter version of flying. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just like slowly hovering over this wall. Oh my god! Yeah. Well, now wait a second. No, so, that's what happened. <laughs> yeah, you look so cute, too. We all actually have some decent, some like kind of. We all have like a, kind of a little special power. Like she can do that. I can talk to plants. Oh yeah, you Crow can. Boy yeah. can probably do can something. Talk to plants. He I basically has talked to plant as just a, a like a regular what power as that? a language. Yeah, I didn't know that's that. how we found the kobolds. What? No, oh, the kobolds found us. Yeah, they, we, well, we were, we were going towards them. When you found the the second camp, he I think he actually asked oh. like which direction it was at. Yeah, yeah. The, the, oh yeah, the kobolds guided us. Oh my god, I forgot about that. You guys Co- had kobolds with yeah. you as an yeah. escort. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We told them. Didn't we tell them to? I forgot go about away? that. Because they yeah. weren't useful. Well, you guys, yeah, you guys oh, had right. five kobolds. <laughs> with yeah, we had an army. We had a small army of kobolds. They followed you out into the clearing, and were just sort of like mingling with the rest of the kobolds during while you guys. Oh, were during, the, during yeah. the concert. Yeah. So you guys <laughs> yeah. get you guys get beyond these. There's like two layers of walls. You guys get past that, and we then do. there are there are two other kobolds that are still stationed at this like like dense forest tunnel that leads back into something. Right. Can we go over the geography pr- pretty well already? Uh, I mean, cl- clearing walls and then there's sort of an opening yeah. in the back oh, that leads somewhere. A, we're on a cliff. First it's, yeah, first it's cliff face, which we like kind of scampered up with the kobolds. And then after a good distance into the cliff, there's wall number one. We'll get to you in a minute. And then <laughs> behind wall number one, a little right. distance, there's wall number two. And then there's a path that cuts through all the way from basically the first wall into the mountain. Yeah. And there's forest. Well, uh, in the, into the forest. It's basically just really okay. dense forest, but there's a clearing of a sort of path that leads there back into go. it. Okay. So it's, it's just walls of plant that just kind of leads back right. into yeah. it. A fire Kirby said he denounces genocide. Good, right. good job. <laughs> on that <laughs> note. <laughs> feel proud of yourself. Yeah, yeah wait for it. <laughs> on, <laughs> on that note. <laughs> so, so, we, so, so we're by, behind the second wall. But yeah. we, we think that's where the dragon is, right? And we're there's, supposed to yeah, there's two, but there's two. There's two co- there, or There's four, I think, actually guarding it. Right. Only and you and I are there because he's still hurting, hurting, <laughs> hard as <laughs> doing great. And Douglas is gone somewhere. <laughs> Douglas is still just hanging out. So remember, you yeah. tried to sneak in, but it didn't work. But got caught. I did. And then learned how weak cobalt are. <laughs> right. I got caught, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna take a shot, I guess. So I just like take a shot, and it is out. <laughs> yeah. It, it's dead. She just like, one shots the cobalt, and she's like, hey, these things are squishy. So you, <laughs> so both of you, just like jumped on right. that point. Yeah, they were out. They were out in like seconds. Um, and then, so we go in through the, like, forest tunnel hey, thing, because we're squishy. like, ah, we can take a dragon on our own. We just saw a dragon. It's, like, two feet tall. A dragon. Um, right, the dragon. So you guys, I don't know any better. Yeah, that's if what we were thinking. Did, the, yeah, that's what we were thinking. Maybe someone else should have said something. So yeah. you guys find find this just empty clearing with nothing in it for a second. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you hear something approaching, and I think you freeze, because you have your statue ability. I have, I have an ability, can, yeah, exactly. You get, like, plus 20 to stealth if you just don't move. I'm just no, like, I, I, every time that happens, I actually just, like, hide behind his shoulder. Yeah. I get just, like, <laughs> tucked down under. I don't um, even think it's plus 20. If I, if no one is around at the time, and I don't move, I am just an, I, I appear as an object. Right, you right. I, I think it's I think it's the same as like taking a twenty on stealth essentially. Oh, so okay. technically, right. somebody who was like really perceptive could still tell, but mm-hmm. no average person is going to tell you apart okay. from a statue. Right. Um, I didn't know that. Good to know. But then out of the trees emerges a dragon. A baby dragon. <laughs> An actual yes. dragon. A small one, <laughs> but not not two feet, like our last dragon. No, it's this terrifying. one is an actual dragon. And I'm like, we should go. <laughs> and then well, I'm, I'm, I'm a statue though. I'm right. pretending to be a statue. I'm like, we should leave. So it, it looks up and sees him there. Just in its clearing. And just yeah. like, like kind of like hones in on this thing <laughs> and drops whatever, it, like it's dragging in some carcass or something and drops it on the ground and then starts like easing towards this weird statue thing, like sniffing at it. Very suspicious. Um, and this then a terrifying Thomas moment. has to make a decision. And what did you do, Thomas? I proceed to use my, what was it? My, not mind mind thrust. Yeah, mind thrust. And attack the dragon. <laughs> and I'm like, oh fuck. Well, that was the. Uh, it was like an ambush, basically. I mean, yep. it was that okay. was the right thing. It to wasn't do. a bad decision. Really, it was like, the given best the information decision you had. This was the thi- This would have been the, an awesome trophy. The only for thing Mr. is, is I so well. I expected this entire party to approach this thing at once when I was planning this out. Yes, yeah, not <laughs> half of it. <laughs> we're missing. We're missing our our DPS and our bard. So uh, he <laughs> does the mind thrust on it. It rears back, and then it now speaks back to you through the mind. Oh, that's right. It does. Yeah. And says, uh, 
something about like it was you me. don't belong here. Yes. And then does an ice breath blast at you and takes down like half your health at once. Yep. And then you guys make my favorite decision ever, which a lot of D and D players don't make, which is. We should run now. <laughs> <laughs> and you turn around and you just book it down the corridor. Yep. We <laughs> Not ran. Particular. We were like, oh fuck. <laughs> I'm like running ahead of you. You shot at it. Wait, before that. Or, yeah, I did. Right before I that. Did. Oh, yeah, you, you shot, shot, shot at it. Okay, it so work. I am. Because we am, thought we were committed. Right. We thought this was our fight. Right. So you shot at it. I am the damage, like in our group. Because uh, John's not You're there. You're ranged damage and John's melee damage. Yeah, and much. I do a lot of damage. And so I shot at it and it did nothing. Pink. And then I was like, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> because Thomas does not do enough damage without me. I don't know even what happened. Apparently I could hit it, but it just didn't land that Yeah, that particular, just didn't roll high that particular oh, yeah. wasn't, yeah. Um, but I was like freaking out. And I'm like, we gotta go. So we ran. Uh, I tripped over a log. And then ran it into chased a us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we had a whole chase sequence, which is funny. We're gonna plan out a chase sequence. We did have but a whole chase sequence. Long story short, without going through every step yeah. of the chase sequence, um, they crashed through the woods, got out, like vaulted themselves over the wall. Um, oh, hey, this is somebody that paid to uh, get super chat, so we'll respond to them in just a minute. Oh, cool. Um, they vaulted themselves over the wall. Um, Crowboy's out there just playing away, yeah, just rocking and just sees away. them running out, and then a friggin' dragon breaks through the tree. Oh, cool. <laughs> So I think you did Court of Shards and like killed five kobolds in one ball, <laughs> yeah. including yeah, your own I'm people. There, I'm sitting there playing <laughs> Old Town Road, and there's like a hundred in front of me, and I see that stuff has gone down. So I Court of Shards, and like a hundred kobolds just turn into blood in front of me. <laughs> I'm like, Time to go, oh, and then yeah. I think I switch to uh, make, march. make Fast Song. Oh right, so yeah. yeah, he has a song that increases everybody's speed, so they're all booking it, but the dragon's still it's fast flying and flying. For yes. us. And it releases another big cone of ice breath, and then you drop. Like, you go, yeah. go, go unconscious on the ground. That's right. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm, KO. You. I'm like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. Like, oh, God, what are we going to do? And I was I'm pretty sure forward. you were going to die. But then she was like, wait, John asked for health potions last time. Yeah. <laughs> and you had them on you. You had the bag. That's right, I had the bag. You always um, had the satchel. bag. With so, the wand in it that teleports you. Yes, makers. I had the, yep, and I had so the So she grabbed like, her tiny, tiny little fairy body, like and pulled like, one out and force fed you. Was like, mouth. Um, and then so uh, good. So finally good. you guys make it to the end of the cliff. <laughs> I think you just like belly flop, like slip and slide on the mud, like yes. just off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> right, we make it all the way to the edge of the cliff and I was like, can't run anymore. And then Dive. you guys go off. We kind of have to go into more detail here because this is like a really like, a lot of stuff happened in this one moment. Intricate. She flies, like floats him down as you fall through trees trying to grab at <laughs> yeah. stuff. And I'm failing every it's like not fine grab I'm trying. <laughs> no. Um, but I weigh like two pounds, so I'm like not falling that fast. Right. You get to the bottom with him and then realize, so he's falling, you you catch him right over the river. Yeah, like, like he <laughs> stops like, like over the river. <laughs> and then you see him falling up there, so you're like, ah crap. And so you fly off that way. I do. Which cancels it on yep. you, so you drop into the water. <laughs> Very <And> cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> and you Into sink because you're sink, a stone man. But you don't have to breathe. So that's I don't nice. have to breathe because I'm right. a quary. Aquatic. Aquatic. And a rock. <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. I'm an Aquarius. Unlike Crowboy over here who's definitely a Gemini. Yeah. Um, so you lower him to the ground and then right, you fly so over we, trying to help him as the dragon crests the edge of the cliff and then starts flying down too. Right, so I'm freaking out because uh, so you guys take this the away. Thought has already died. And I'm like, oh god, I have to think of a plan like immediately or else we are... Because the dragon has now come down, you're underwater, and you're falling, and we, like, just make it to the ground. <clears throat> and I'm like, we have no plan. We are screwed. We are absolutely screwed. And so I make, like, a split decision, and I dive into the water towards Thomas, or towards <laughs> Stephocles, but I'm, again, like, yeah. I'm not even a pound. I'm just a this yeah. tall... And I immediately start, like, don't I immediately we, start, like... Yeah, we're doing like that. Like, yeah, you start, so so this is great, because she, I, I don't know what anybody's plan is. Also, this whole time, Allison has been going, like, I have an idea that I can use in, like, a last case scenario, like, I but I don't want to do it yet. so bad. And I was like, I know everything idea. on your character sheet, I don't know what you're talking about, but I'm interested to see where this goes. I'm so scared. So she tries diving in the water, I'm like, make a swim check, it doesn't work, she Failed. just swept away. So oh, wait, I'm sorry, we forgot the part before... 
where Treebeard busts out of the oh, jungle did, yeah. and oh, right. destroys a bunch of kobolds. Well, because well, the dragon you know, is like the dragon. Oh, okay, okay. Douglas right. runs out and just buries his axe in the back he of the dragon. He gives us the opportunity to jump off the cliff. Okay. Right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. He gives us Sorry. the opportunity. Sorry for doing so that's what that's delays true. the dragon chasing you. Okay. That's um, a good point. The jag- dragon is chasing us and then suddenly you're like Because by the time <laughs> the trees are moving <laughs> apart and yeah. one tree is like yeah. running through them full speed. Suddenly there's just like the walls around this place like Rumble and you just see this giant tree <laughs> with an axe, just like <laughs> by the time, straight into its back. By the time the dragon comes over the edge, you guys are already in the water. That's yes. yes. So it, it eventually lands and starts sticking its head and looking around for you guys. As and, and so she gets swept away. She's flying off, like reaching. You I, try to reach for her on your turn and it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, but then you're like, off, wait. I have this ability that lets me telekinetically move five pound objects. Right. And I was like, technically she fits in that description, so if you <laughs> want to use it, go for it. But she'll take damage from it or something. So you end up like pulling her towards you and I end up grabbing damage. her. Yeah. Um, Dragon's looking around for both of you. You manage to communicate to him. Because I'm, so I'm like, I'm like, look at my brain. <laughs> I'm, like, doing all these I'm like pointing at my head, like do yeah. something. I basically allowed you to use a mind reading thing, which right. I have in my inventory. Which, yeah. Um, and you asked so you were able to communicate to him that you wanted the wand. And so I was like, oh, yes. she's going to try to hit the dragon with it and right. see if it does something. So the dragon actually at this point had stuck its head underwater and had found us. Because you would, you would, you would like, sunk to the ground. The dragon is not an idiot. So it flies down to the water and it had sunk its head to the it ground. And I'm over here, like, I'm over here, like, <laughs> flailing, uh, trying to get you to read my mind. And once you do, I say that I want the wand. And by that point, the dragon is actually coming at us. He was swimming towards yeah. us. Yeah, so so the, f- the final moment here is the dragon just, like, drops into the river and just pushes off and lets the river propel itself at these two in the water. Yeah. And then Allison goes, okay, I touched Thomas with the wand. <laughs> and everybody there is like, wait, what? <laughs> and I, I looked at his health and I was like, technically that could work. Roll the d20 to see if it works. And she rolled... And he, she touches it, and he just, like, disappears. The way I've described it is every time you hit it, it does, like, the Harry Potter, like, teleport thing yeah, where they, like... Um, like The apparition. Yeah, they just, like, wrap around themselves in the fourth dimension or whatever and disappear. He disappears. The river immediately takes you just yeah. far away. You, you and the dragon just, like, stops, like, wait, what so the hell's happening? The wand is about my size, so I'm actually, like, holding onto it like this as I just, like, float down the river. <laughs> Like and then, speeding. and then you just run off into the trees. Yeah, I, the whole time yeah. I was just like covering myself in mud, like Arnold and Predator. <laughs> yeah. like, but and then, then he like, looks at me, and so I just run away. And yeah, it, was, it wasn't hard to get away from him in the thick forest. Twenty meanwhile, minutes later, Kyle calls. Yeah. Meanwhile, like, Douglas is still up on top of the oh, yeah. uh, the cliff, just murdering every single kobold. Yes. <laughs> he does not like lizards. No I really, does. yeah. Uh, Douglas Fur really does not like lizards because he's enslaved by them. So it was great because then we we end the session with the literally every member of the party being in a completely different location. <laughs> so as part of the so we leveled up. I right. basically gave each of them their own little thing to do. Right. Um, they've sort of revealed like you went back to the Coliseum and had a talk with Mr. Millennium and you walked your way back. Kyle you, called Jeffrey was like, so you ran my into group a friendly, tried to die. <laughs> well, we'll get there. <laughs> you ran into a friendly man in the woods who taught you how to shoot better, and then John killed a bunch of kobolds and walked back. Um, and at the start of the next I didn't next kill session, a bunch. I killed them all. So th- this was this was sort of the, <laughs> the introduction. I was going to say, should we, yeah, we answer that? Oh, yeah, yeah, real quick. I wanted to just read off. We got a... We oh. got a, a uh, a comment on the super chat thing, which is something that YouTube allows now. What is now. this currency? From Crimson Mindatar. It's a uh, yen, I think, because he says, Hello, I love your videos in production. I first found this channel with the video Civilization Five. I'm Not Invading You. Uh, thank you all for entertaining us. Love from uh, Yokosuka, Japan. Sweet. Oh my god, that's awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much. That's so thank you. cool. Also, by doing that, I believe he donated money to us. That's why he's... Oh. Like featured there, so thank you so Nate. much for that. Thank you for yeah. joining in, and awesome. thanks for the donation. Thanks for the money, and also thanks for being from Japan. That's just like the coolest shit ever. <laughs> 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 That's just awesome. I don't know. I know that we have a lot of like, like British fans. Thank you for being born. <laughs> thank you for being born. <laughs> and like, Brits are cool. <laughs> I guess. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but like, he's from Japan. So so <laughs> so I said that session that session hit about the halfway mark. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. About halfway through our. Story. That was the first main oh, wait, big thing. Room? Oh no. Or second big thing. When we so I'll give I'll give a quick segue and then let you guys kind of take it mm-hmm. take it away again. 
But starting back up, um, they met back up at the Coliseum. Um, Mr. Millennium greeted them, uh, praised them for the stuff they were able to catch, uh, specifically about the Velociraptor. He liked that a lot. Um, I slapped Kyle. Expressed that he. (laughs) Thanks. Expressed that he uh, he would have liked the dragon. That sounded like a hurt. (laughs) Yes, it did. Um, They were also introduced to a couple of um, background characters, uh, seemingly behind him, which were the uh, the weird uh, snake woman that led his his like that was the captain of the guard there. Wait, what are we talking about? The next uh, when you guys got back to the Coliseum, you you reconvened. Oh, Oh, we met his. Yeah, he was in a conversation with a, a strange muscular snake lady. And a, and a short, um, cloaked hobgoblin guy. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I wasn't here for this. I think you weren't. I think you missed the first half of this one. You did. Yeah. I'll, I'll fill you in on those characters later, since I, I think I didn't Oh, yet. this is the one that John wasn't in. Oh, this one has another tweet. He was in this one. He just joined late, that's all. Yeah, but um, there was a tweet. Oh, right, there was a tweet. There was a tweet? There was a tweet. So Mr. Millennium basically uh, handed you guys an empty bag. It said everything's that you need is in here. Um, go forth into the world and uh, do the things on this list. Spent 40 minutes on that bag. Um, and uh, he left, went out to do work, and you guys started making your way towards the town of, uh, I'm forgetting the name of it, White something. White Claw. You happen to remember the town of White, White Claw? Claw. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the name of your Not hometown? Not off the top of my head! <laughs> yeah. um, so they make their way through the forest towards this town, okay. heading north and out of the jungle into the world to go perform some I was gonna some say, deeds for Mr. Millennium. Now we have a map. Now we have a, li- a, a list of things Mr. Millennium wants. Yes, yeah, you have a chore uh, list. You have a destination. Well, there's only one real way out of where we are right. physically located on the continent. Like which is a mountain pass through, yeah. the, through this like range of mountains. So we're on a mission. I personally um, think it's important that Matt spent an hour-ish yeah. <laughs> trying to figure out how the bag of holding works. I, don't know I think this is very important is. considering like, what Jeffrey did okay. later. Close enough. Like, so yeah, like for context, this. they spent an hour trying to figure out how to... To see what's inside the bag. Which was yeah. cool. It was kind of like, yeah, it was like a... F- and, and they failed. They never figured it out. No, and my personality... Fun- no, yeah. cro- y- cro- y'all didn't. Well, yeah, we kind of had it. <laughs> but my, fun- my Crowboy's personality fundamentally changed because he was trying to figure out what the bag of holding was, and he stuck his head inside. <laughs> and like I was greeted by just like a void... That had no emotions. It was or a sound. cave. It was a cave. You stuck yeah. your head through, and it yeah. was just a black and white cave that you couldn't breathe in. But and I could see all your wind. stuff laying around. Anyway, <laughs> it was very strange for me. That but I still weird. couldn't figure out what was happening. I it's, 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 so much. It is worth noting because it becomes very uh, important that um, the whole like planes and dimensions and stuff I I made up from scratch for this campaign, so they do not yeah. follow the traditional like D and D route. Right. So yeah, inside the bag of holding, he specifically was uh, a he was inside of a cave. Everything was black and white, and you couldn't breathe, and all your stuff was just kind of laying around on the floor. In but I couldn't cave. make out any of the stuff. It yeah, was it was like, all shadowy. Yeah, it was like all shadowy or, you know, mm. wispy. Uh, so, Thomas, you were, what were you saying? Also, you were, Thomas oh. saw a, a creature on the path, which was a uh, oh, right. completely silhouette, oh, right. uh, like, a, like a silhouetted it's owl right. thing right. that flew off in the direction they were flying in. And I in. spoke to it, yeah. psychically, because I can do that. <laughs> and I said, I see you, and it said, I see you. <laughs> and then we just kept going. Yep. <laughs> like owls do. And eventually found yourself at White Cliff. <laughs> White Claw White Village. Um, which White was Claw. a uh, a village of orcs, half orcs, and uh, humans. Mm-hmm. Um, that looked like it had been attacked recently with several buildings damaged, and they were greeted by the chieftain. Um, that said that uh, saw Douglas thought he was a forest spirit. Yep. And uh, said. That their prayers had been answered and took you guys to see their their town shaman oh, to figure out how to uh, repel the attacks that were coming out of the cave every night. Yes, they were being tormented. And then what happened? Uh, <laughs> they all came knocking on my door. Can we just you say, literally knocked yeah, on our door. It was amazing. And this is just like how <laughs> this is the Ka- Ka- Kyle is the best DM on earth because yeah. it was it was us four. It was in the campaign. Us three. We us were waiting. Oh yeah. For John oh yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. John we were there. expecting. <laughs> Oh, this is <gasps> it was just like these. <laughs> this is odd. It was what exactly the like this. <laughs> it's a new D&D character. Know. So right on cue, what a the twist. door knocks. Is it pizza pie? It's Ian. I planned this entire it's thing. Ian. Oh, Ian's here? Yeah. There we go. Come on in. Come on in. We're going over. We're doing Pathfinder hey. stream still. Hey, Ian. Hi, Ian. So they were just talking about how someone knocked on the door randomly. Yeah. Uh, Literally, not randomly, right as planned. you knocked. Well, planned, <laughs> but for, the, for them. 
So yeah, we're sitting there and we're all playing for like an hour and a half, two hours or something like that. Sorry, I told you our stream didn't cut out. Is it still going? Okay, okay, cool. Sorry, I cut out on my phone. It's loading slow. Go right ahead. Anyway, we're playing for like an hour, an hour and a half. I'm wasting a lot of time with the bag of holding, but like Jeffrey's not here. And then we like go into the village. And, and the chieftain's like, oh, go talk to my son. He lives in that cabin over there. And so we go, and we knock on the door to the cabin, and then Kyle gets up and opens the door, and Jeffrey's just standing outside. <laughs> and he's like, hey, guys. And then he just walks in and starts playing, like, without a, missing a beat. Yeah, we're and we're just, just stunned. Like, like, we don't know what just happened. Like, were you in your car? And he was. Jeffrey yeah. Was, yeah. Jeffrey he was been, an hour and a half away. Yeah. And we had, he wasn't even part of our group. And we just show up to this village, and he's like, go knock on the door. Kyle opens so it, and cool. then just We were, we knew John was going to show up. So I spent like ten minutes looking at Jeffrey, trying to be like, why does John look different? <laughs> <laughs> why is Jeffrey here? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you just jump in, you just sit down, and you're like, anyway, so hi guys. I'm the local uh, shaman, and we're like, why the fuck is Jeffrey here? <laughs> it yeah, so it was planned out for a good long time. Kyle, you know, he... he planned, uh, I remember he told me to, if I wanted to play, make a character and all this, and I said, also, don't tell anybody that you're doing this. I want this to be a surprise. And this was like a month beforehand, at least. Wow. <laughs> and Damn. so, yeah, it was planned for a long time. Um, and yeah, the day of, it was very interesting. I got here fairly early because Kyle didn't know exactly when I would need to show up. So I was waiting in the car for, for a good little while. And, uh, yeah, no, that was, that was pretty fun and entertaining to do that. Um, it was so immersive. <laughs> it was. It was. Um, okay, and so then we meet with Jeff, we meet with Vaz, and John shows up. John, are you there by that point? Uh, I showed up, yeah, I think I was, I think that's when I showed up, just a little bit after Jeffrey. Yeah, okay, yeah, it was a little bit after Jeffrey. Okay, and then the story continues, um, and you talk about how your town's being plagued. <laughs> By a big yeah, so basically, yeah, uh, my my village was getting attacked by this giant golden automaton. <laughs> like every single night, this robot would walk out of the cave that our village is next to, and it would just start destroying houses all night. We would try and fight it off. We couldn't ever destroy it, and it would just keep coming back every single night. And we were trying to figure out a way to stop this. And why was that happening? <laughs> Uh, you know, no reason. Uh, <laughs> so, if I remember correctly, basically, um, I, I went into the cave, and I found a... Catfolk dude to come through. Which is that's important. right. Yeah, that's what started it Catfolk off. Dude. So, Catfolk dude, dude came through, went into the cave. Um, and then, after shortly after that, basically, there was like a, a large rumble or something, like some sort of noise or... Yeah. Something like that. And um, I went to go check it out. And uh, that's when I came across my shadow owl companion. So, um, which I believe is the same one that y'all came went across <laughs> earlier. Um, I didn't know about it. I never saw it yet. Yeah. So basically, you know, I'm a shaman of, of life. A little, what is it, the, the spirit of life? Yeah. And so. this is kind of like the exact opposite of that. Uh, okay. Do you have Jeffrey's character yet? I don't have his drawing done, oh. unfortunately. So the owl's basically like a spirit of bones? I think that was the name of it, yeah. So you have, you have like, yeah, good light and like dark stuff, like multiple different powers coming in. Yeah, so it's an interesting concept, and I'm, I'm taking in on this owl, which is giving me new powers and stuff like that and um but right after that is when we started getting attacked the village started getting attacked by this robot nobody know in my village knows i have this owl um so i've been keeping it secret the owl's nice enough i like it and all that and so you know i don't want to i don't want to hurt it or anything and i want to figure out a way to stop the robots and that's when these people come in <laughs> wait so we have a super chat uh we do have a super chat and read it real quick. It says from Shut Sky Hunter. Wonderful job, LOL. Keep up the good work on the videos too. Lots of love from Scotland. Hey. Yay! Thank you. Scotland. Scotland. This is where you weigh in on your opinion of the Scots. By the way, <laughs> it's probably worth noting that uh, Douglas Fir is a Scottish. <laughs> <What>? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Scottish. Douglas Fir and everybody from the place he comes from has a Scottish accent, so that's Woo. fun. They're all yeah. Scottish. Yeah. Crowboy is uh, what? Um, uh, what's, what's the accent? New Zealand. 
Oh yeah, my accent is Korg. <laughs> Korg. Korg is the accent. <laughs> Korg is the from accent. that movie about Iron Man. Um, so just because we're, we're, <laughs> we're running kind of, uh, just to, to not try to go too far over our time here, we have, um, they they fight off this Atomaton thing when it comes in, they manage to destroy it, it melts into gold slag. I believe you spend the entire night uh, tearing I it up and sticking it gold. into the bag. So, um, there's a, gargoyles are known for being, um, for having like weird quirks, okay. and like maybe collecting things, yeah. which I didn't intend to use at any point, yeah. but now I just, I hoard things, including dirty gold. <laughs> yeah, no, especially with the bag, now that you can stay now that I, Yes, now that I have an infinite bag, I just, and, I'll take uh, it. <laughs> That has finally helped them figure out how to access the items in the bag and see what was there. Yeah. Um, they, they, they didn't so know how to see a bunch what of all the items were in the bag. Uh, they were just kind of like trying to guess. They'd put their hand in, like think of something and see if it would come out. <laughs> which it would. That's how it works. Did you think there's, of the there's a bunch of supplies and there was a painting of Mr. Millennium, which is what you see on the stream. Uh, yeah, so, so what, what time was supposed to go every, uh, 30 minutes ago, but we started 30 minutes late, so... <laughs> so everyone, everyone's trying to figure out how to open oh, this wow, bag okay. for, like, the entire time they've had it. And then Jeffrey comes along and just turns it inside out. So, so to skip ahead a little bit, just so that we can cover, like, the next actual big part, um, the, they spend the night, the next morning they venture into the cave, they find that it's been, um, completely collapsed, and they have to take sort of a detour where they come across, uh, giant, uh, dwarven ruined doors... Um, and have to solve a bit of like a magic puzzle to get inside. Yeah. yeah. Um, we make it inside though. Yeah. And we make it inside <laughs> and we kind of like start exploring all these different corridors. That was a dungeon crawl. Um, it is a dungeon. We're officially in a dungeon. Um, Basically trying to see. find what's co- what's sending these things out so that they can stop it from happening. Right. So it's like this two story, like with an open area in the center kind of dungeon thing. And so we start going down these like different hallways and just start opening doors. I think that's the first thing we do is we just start going different directions. So Dothocles and I went upstairs. We split up the party. Yeah, we did. We split <laughs> Never the party. split up the party. <laughs> so uh we talked about not the party. goes right and then we and did. Sir Douglas Fur and Vaz go left because Jeffrey's character thinks that large tree people are spirits. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the spirit of the forest, obviously. Right, right, right. So he's like He's like, this dude's a god, and so he follows him. We all know that that's a bad idea. Um, Because I'm following footprints, because we saw cat folk footprints, and I'm trying to find a cat folk person. Right, right, right. Um, And so Crowboy stumbles into a room. (laughs) The best room. (laughs) Easily the best room. Yeah, because he always ends up in the best room. I walk into a room that's empty except for just like a suit of armor. Pa- a, suit of, a suit of power armor. Yeah, but I don't know that, so I'm like trying to talk to it. I'm like, hello, <laughs> hello, what are you doing? But it was not saying anything. So I go and I poke and I prod and I turn and it opens up for me like power armor in Fallout 4. Yeah. And I step inside and it has it shows me. <laughs> it shows. <laughs> then I just have this like golden Wolfenstein power armor. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone else is like dying to ghosts or something. And then you get yeah. to fight off <laughs> you get to fight <laughs> your armor. Yeah, and then I test out my armor because there's like shadows in the corner and they come at me and I'm like, nah. <laughs> I have a gun on one arm and like a blade on the other. And I think I found this armor because I was useless for the other four. Uh, <laughs> I actually wasn't sure who was going to find it, but it was convenient that you found it. Cause yes. Because basically my only skill is playing songs for my buds, and then none of them ever want to take the bonus that I gave them. Well, you always take the speed bonus. So Kyle was like, here, now you are Iron Man. I was like, okay. Now uh, you are Iron Man. So John and Jeffrey went left. What did you guys find again? Yeah, we found, we find? found a, okay, so, okay. So Jeffrey and I wander in, into a, uh, we go, we go, uh, we, we see one door, and we pass it by, uh, because it had writing we couldn't read on it. So we're like, nah, let's keep going, maybe we'll come back. So we go to another door. Which is bigger, and we ma- managed to open it by taking the handle off the other door, and um, we open it up and we just see a war okay. between automatons, like from they kind of like Kyle apparently didn't know anything about this, but uh, they're like the, the dwarven automatons from uh, Elder Scrolls, and just oh, a bunch yeah. of those fighting uh, a bunch of shadow monsters, and we just like see that, and we're just like. Nope, and we, <laughs> and we back out. We <laughs> back out of the door. Of, like, you two just like opening the door and just like seeing all this. There was like a giant like bladed spider monster fighting all of them. Oh yeah, made them. made of swords. <laughs> and then just. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so we go back into the um, into the other door we found and we open it up and there's just an arc 
an archway with a ca- with we we don't know it, but it's basically an old timey camera, and we're kind of looking at it, and then uh, Jeffrey looks through it, and what do you see, Jeffrey? Yeah, so I'm going through. I'm seeing pictures of what is landscapes, right? Or no, 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 no. no, 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 no. no. When first, you look, no, when you first look, I look looking. just through the glass. I look through it, and standing on the other side of the room is basically like a a baby faced ghost person and like or like a like a shadow person but it had like a baby face and uh i i i, I take a look out of the camera and nothing's there <laughs> and i'm freaking out <laughs> and I, I don't see it because it's not I, I can't see it yeah i can't see it and uh yeah this this thing was just freaking me out which has it's like continuously haunting me the whole time <laughs> i've been in this cave after that, so and Jeffrey was like so, legitimately scared. Like, yeah, he, like he was like because that 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 description. <laughs> so he finds a power armor, and we find a whole bunch of nope. So yeah, just nope. And then upstairs, you guys run into we run into like a what are they called automatons? Yeah, we run oh, into yeah. Like a construct. Is the construct, pathfinder word? Yeah, construct, and. We he try asked. to convince him. Can you see our papers? Yeah, he's like papers, please. <laughs> and we were like, <laughs> "Yep, we got those." Yep, didn't work. Didn't, didn't work. Believe us. We, we did. We unsuccessfully though, right? bluffed. What? Didn't we run from him? You, you yes. still ended up running from him, and then and then ran into, into the interrogation room. Yeah, into so the got, far. We yeah. have ten minutes to explain the rest of this story. <laughs> so we run. Yeah. So we run into a room. The room is an interrogation room, like Kyle said. Oh no! Um, I forgot about the room. <gasps> ends up. Now the the automaton is locked out. The construction's locked out. And we're locked in, and oh, yeah, turns out there. there's a oh I say it wrong. It's a wraith. wraith in the room too. So we proceed yes. to fight the wraith. There's a giant <laughs> mirrored wall, and out from it pops up a wraith, which then attacks me. So I can't do anything. Uh, my gun doesn't work on shadow creatures, which this place is plagued with. I am mm-hmm. small, which means if anything hits me, I die, which they can do because they're shadow creatures. The only way to escape them is by flying, but we're in tunnels, so I'm mad. <laughs> I'm mad I'm in here. She's not scared. She's mad. I'm mad. <laughs> uh, so we end, up, we end up coming back together with all of our different varied stories, and we spend the night uh, like idiots. After murdering the one automaton that you found in the hallway. No, no, no. We no, made, that was it, the next we, day. We you killed that first. We, we let that right, automaton fight off the wraith. Oh, you did. And then you we, finished killing it. Yeah. <laughs> we mean Sir Douglas Fur for no reason. He started attacking us. He was so nice to us. He was he trying was so to take nice. us to jail. Yeah. So they, We needed to go to that jail. We ended that session with them deciding to go into the interrogation room, close it off, and uh, do a, a sleep so that they can be ready to fight the next morning and yeah. sort of like share some stuff. Um, so this leads us to our final session. They come back in. They spend the night there a little bit. They sort of like swap stories and have some some bonding campfire time. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeffrey just keeps um, being haunted, freaking the hell out. Nobody knows what's wrong with him. I, I, had, I had a dream about the baby faced <laughs> shadow person. Oh, we skipped the do- the big the big giant door we entered in. That's the, fine. All right. So, well, well, they That's fine. we mentioned that you came through the door. Well, it's kind of important though. when they when they leave the room, they find that the entire place has been covered in a layer of you? water, and the doors they entered in have been closed. And all the lights have turned red, and they navigate their way back to the big factory floor that they saw the battle happening in, and the door has been completely broken open by a whole bunch of weird uh, waterlogged and barnacle-covered zombie things that look like they have thrown themselves against the door until they were able to get it open. Oh, you left out Jeremy Steven Chad. And they, uh, oh yes. they I got in there, yep. They did, they did at one point before that, you guys went into the, the oh, last yeah. room that you hadn't visited, and the you jail. found the weird um, existential... Uh, construct. construct that was sitting in the corner and had been for he was adorable thousands and we loved of years. Him. And so we took him in and uh, then we went to go figure out how to escape this place that was now full of water and red lights. Um, so we go into like this... We do have a super chat real fast. Oh, yeah, super Sorry, chat. from Candy Meow. I feel like we didn't appreciate Kyle's fantastic artwork of all the party's characters enough. It looks beautiful. Keep up your great door monstery work. Greetings from Germany. Germany. It's been a different place every time. Germany. Thanks, guys. Woo! The art is awesome. Yeah, um, Kyle put more effort into like any one of those drawings than I've put into any. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we eventually make it into like the big, like open 
like room area in the back, which has another set of large doors on the other side. And a conveyor belt in the middle. Uh, and a conveyor belt with a Gatling gun in the corner. Um, <laughs> There's all kinds of crap in here. Three large con- uh, cylinder containers against the wall that we enter in from, holding like 20 foot tall jade <laughs> constructs. We well, didn't see what was there at first. You went up to the control panel That's during true. the ensuing fight and turned them on, and like this thing opens up and it's just a big green robot face inside. Right, right. Um, and there's a control panel on top of that. And, and on the far end, the, the, far end, the, the big door. Do- there are bigger oh, right. doors on the far end of this thing being held open by a giant lobster creature that has jammed itself into the doors. Right. So we all split up in this room. I go up to the control panels above the, the jade construct enclosure. Um, I run up to a giant Gatling gun. <laughs> <laughs> and meanwhile, I struggle to run up to anything because I'm slow, because I'm a tray! Uh, Matt, like, busts in, starts taking out shadow creatures one by one. Oh, yeah, zombies. Um, literally, just. Just, when we say Matt, we mean Crowboy. Matt actually wasn't there for this session, oh, right. unfortunately. Uh, but I did yeah. better than I did. <laughs> um, and uh, Dethocles has decided to walk towards the large lobster creature and do like a mind thrust thing. It's of my people. Right, so the so there, this horrifying creature is holding open the doors, and Kyle, the DM, says something like, well, uh, Dethocles feels weirdly <laughs> at home, and we're all like, oh, fuck. And this this whole time, uh, you guys have started hearing a voice booming throughout the thing, saying that it knows you're here, it wants the prism, and it's requesting that you that you come show it yourself. Right. So, uh, Thomas starts doing, like, rolls here and there, we're like, what the f- what's happening? Um, turns out he was rolling to see if he was going to get, like, Turn Sway to, to the dark side, yeah. pretty much, uh, because this creature and him have some kind of connection. Uh, He's a Jew. And I'm over here trying to figure out the control panels with uh, the cute construct that we adopted Aww. into our family. He's so adorable. Aww. Um Poor And Jim. eventually, eventually, you fight the lobster thing. Yeah, yeah. we all. Um, well, I mean, it's mentally. In bad shape. Yeah, he Cro- mentally. Yeah, Corbo and I take on the lobster. You right. guys end up fighting pretty we much weaken- everything in the room. Yeah, we you weaken it enough. The you, yeah. He hit it with the gun. I was he also it shooting it with the Gatling yeah, gun. He got the Gatling gun. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was rolling <laughs> like crap. Yeah, I mean, I shot like you at shot least like twelve bullets. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I, I do so much of those times. So I do so much damage. But this whole this particular fight, this whole fight, I did almost no damage. I was just rolling. It was a huge room. You nothing. I was Yeah, you were slow. I, I had a hard time getting to places. When I finally got there, I was rolling like fives. Oh right, because you slipped and hit the Gatling gun and broke it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I got three minutes. So, so t- we teleport skip again. we teleport uh, Thomas teleports that lobster thing with the wand because it's it's yeah, crushed by the doors anyway. And And then you get the doors open. The big do. doors you, you manage to flip all these switches, the big doors open up and through the doors is a very oh. Stranger Things esque like. No, you touch the ob- you touch the lobster with the wand. Deck. Yes. Yeah, yeah he caught yeah. he captured the lobster and then through the doors there's a big observation deck, there's a big portal behind it. Mm-hmm. And there are just four giant tentacles coming out of the portal, which seems Six. to be the source of the of the voice. For it first. Oh, <laughs> they okay. they replace themselves as you attack them, but they were. <laughs> uh, so we all keep a safe distance, um, <laughs> except order. Crowboy is like on his way, shooting at it with a gun from a safe distance. Uh, and then when Sir Douglas Fir finally catches up, he heads straight towards the tentacles. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Crowboy is like taking out these little zombie things like here and there in this room. It keep their no, oh. sh- no, these are shadow creatures. It's worth mentioning. I can't, I can't the- damage the shadow creatures. So right. I went for the only fleshy thing I could see. Right. right. Um, <laughs> and so you head straight for the tentacles, and he does he actually hits one, right? He tries to swing at one, and it doesn't hit at all. I think he rolled like a twenty-one, and the tentacles right. just like part and move out of the way. Yeah. Uh, and then they grab him and grapple him. Uh, and uh, yeah. Okay, so this. And then hold on, I have. At it this did point, 40 I had damage to you. At this point, I had like forty-two health. It did thirty damage in one hit, and yeah. I was down to like twelve. And then at one point, I was down to like four for some reason. Like I was out down to like four health. Well, well you, so you got for some grabbed. Reason. The rest of you are trying to figure out how to shut this thing down. And you realize several parts of it are jammed up with like metal bars. So you're pulling stuff out psychically from a distance. You're killing stuff off to the side. She's tr- she's going back and forth because the automaton is 
trying to access the controls in the back of the room, and none of you have been able to figure out what they do yet, so you end up helping him get there. Yeah. John is about to die. I'm looking up death rules because I know that next round, that this thing's next turn, John has to make a will save, and if he fails, which he will, it pulls him <laughs> into the portal and they will never see him again. <laughs> I was about to be out of the game. Um, Crowboy, though... Uh, shoots it with his armor gun, manages to take down a half of the one tentacle's health, and then John, on his turn, right before the tentacle's turn, rolls a nat 20. Also, we, we, the G... Um, and it, that thing. hasn't happened yet, yeah. I don't think. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And he, he manages to sever the tentacle and escape, and, and then also get hit by every single shadow in the room, but like get away yeah. with one health. I have right. one health That's left. Yeah. And, and then, then your efforts back in the back managed to finally open up one of these things right. and a I gigantic a construct up to the control panel. Yeah, this whole time she's over here messing with the control panel. The, yeah. This huge Jade Colossus thing emerges from it yeah. and starts immediately focusing in on this portal and just starts shooting lasers out of its face at the yeah. thing in the portals. And anything in its way. And uh, so it finally comes to a point where you pull the last thing out of the machine. Yes. Um, I think you or Crowboy or somebody like Cranks the the control around I, yeah, I do. in the in the control panel, and then something breaks. All the lights turn off. Right. The portal starts cycling through. It it changes, and then all the tentacles just like get sliced off and yeah, fall on the ground. Um, and then it cycles through, and you guys see like multiple different planes flashing through, until so finally it lands on what looks like your plane, but somewhere else. And then the portal starts closing. So everyone yeah. has to just book it through this thing as fast as possible, which oh, is easier no. because thankfully you're playing your song yeah. that increases everybody's speed. Right. Um, the only person that wasn't going to go through... <laughs> was me, because I was going to go back to my village, so I went up to the portal, was saying bye to everybody when... But here's the thing. Keep in mind, <laughs> the, entire facility, the entire facility was on lockdown. The front door we came in was completely locked and shut, and... There was no lights in the place at all anymore, and there was still John talking, not Sir Douglas Fir. And and there's still a giant baby, like or a still a baby monster ghost link in there after him. Yeah. So I grab him. Oh, is that why you grabbed him? It is. No. So I grabbed him because he he stopped at the portal, and we're all rushing to get through. So he hesitates, and or I I think he hesitates, and he stops, and I grab him and I jump through (laughs) with him, and then as the portal's closing. Behind us, we see uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Seamus Chad, or whatever his name is. <laughs> Jeremy Charles Chad or something, I don't know. Yeah. We know there's Jeremy in there somewhere. Whatever but you guys named him. He, uh, we gave him like four <laughs> different names, so we just combined like them all. running at us, and I'm like, no! <laughs> like running and waving in the distance, and then the portal closes. Aww. And uh, we left off with um, this group <laughs> standing outside in the middle of like like Oklahoma, basically. Just, yeah. just wide open <laughs> fields. <laughs> in front of this this closed arch portal thing now, and in the distance there are several wooden houses. Uh, and that's that's where we're starting up next time. Why was it, boys? Hooray! Right. That's the whole story. That's what's happening. That was everything so far, yeah. So, uh, so next time we play, we're going to start up on that session, we're going to record it, and um, if it turns out, I will are be you, posting it to the channel. You're posting this to the channel too, right? So people yeah. can refer back. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That way people who, who start late... But yeah, that's basically the story. What do you guys think? Are you interested in seeing more of that? Do the characters sound interesting? Is that like a story that is actually interesting to watch more of? We lost with these half guys our playing? <laughs> We did, <laughs> yeah. Like there was a lot of talking. Uh, yeah. This is going to be more useful later on, I think. But. Right, this is more of a reference back to... You should um, you should put like like timestamps in the description for when this goes yeah. up. Yeah, well, somebody, somebody will do that. <laughs> I'll let okay. someone else do that in a comment. Sure, someone else will do that. <laughs> um... um a bit of a Basically, there's, there's four big there's four big sections. You have the Colosseum, you have the dragon, cobalt things, and then you have um, his village, his village, and then the uh, dwarven area. Yeah, I think most people uh, that are watching this are probably interested. In... I mean, probably if you stuck around this long, I assume you're interested in seeing the actual game be played. Yeah, and it's uh, you know it's way more fun actually watching because these guys are great at playing their characters. <laughs> It's um, been fun. And Kyle's a great DM. Kyle, 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 commented yeah. Kyle is an outstanding DM. Yes. Completely and we'll be able true. to have, um, you know, hopefully more more guest appearances and stuff in future episodes and things. We do that. A lot of it has... <laughs> you don't know. Okay. You don't know what I'm doing. All right, whatever. Um, but, yeah, basically the only, the, the only things that we're thinking about are, like, um, making sure that, that it's still just as fun for us to continue playing. Who is this Al? The other stuff that we're doing later that I'm not going to mention right here. Um, Is it Ricky? But yeah, 
that's the that's pretty much the plan. And we're gonna record them. We're gonna post them up separately. They're not gonna be live because again, this is a, a nightmare to try and put together. You can just keep the pillows. <laughs> Anyone is welcome to enter. Yeah. Rachel, what's up? Hey. That's pretty oh, much it. It's Matt. <laughs> so oh my. Thanks for staying with us. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for the stream today, though. Yeah. Um, we're gonna go ahead and close this down. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening to the the long D and D story. And uh, tune in when we uh, when we actually get the. Game up. We're gonna record it, I think, in a couple of weekends if everybody's available. And then hopefully we'll that means we'll have it up like roughly by the end of this month or early next month we'll have the first session up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks everybody who stuck around. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. I'm going to rush over there and try to turn this off now. No, the longer you take, the more awkward this is going to be.